What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design a navigation drawer in Figma that aligns with Google's material design guidelines. If you're not familiar with navigation drawers or other components within Google's material design system, I recommend going to their site, which I've linked in the description, and watching the other videos in this playlist to get a better understanding. You're likely familiar with navigation drawers from applications like Gmail. Essentially, it's a list of items embedded within a sheet or at the left side of your screen if you're on desktop. If you have many different rows of content, you can distinguish them from each other with sections and give each section a header. Every navigation drawer will have a container, an optional header, an optional divider, and then the active text overlay layer. So if you're on, say, the My Files page in this example, that would be active. You also have the active text. Other items that are not currently active would be the inactive text. And then you have the subtitle, which will help differentiate between other sections. If you're using a modal to create a navigation drawer, there will be a scrim that dims the content behind it. First thing I'm going to do is create a new frame. Let's go to desktop and let's just select a standard desktop screen. Now that I have that, I'm going to set this background to be a little bit darker gray. I'm going to create another frame that we're going to make 256 pixels wide. We'll make that fill white and then we'll align it at the top left of the screen and then we'll have it go all of the way down the screen. We'll set this to scale and then this will be fixed to the left side. Let's make sure this background is white. Now that I have this, I'm going to add a title. Let's change this font to SF Pro and we'll switch this to be semi bold and we're going to set the weight to 18 pixels. We'll make the line height 24 pixels and the letter spacing will be 0%. Let's make sure to include 16 pixels of padding on both sides. So what we will do here, so the max width of this will be 224. I'm going to take this and make it be 24 pixels from the top and then below that, let's add another layer of text. We're going to set this weight to regular. We'll make the size 12 pixels with an 18 pixel line height and zero pixel letter spacing. And we'll call this subtitle and then we will switch this color to be a lighter gray. We'll make this title color, the system colors. Now what I'm going to do is create a frame. We'll make that frame the width of this container. And then we will make that 48 pixels high. And then I am going to take this subtitle. I'm gonna add it to this frame. Well, let's actually make this 15 pixels, 20 pixels. And then let's set this to 900. We'll change this to say inbox. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm going to type the word envelope. I'm gonna change this to Font Awesome Pro, and then I'm gonna change the width to 20 pixels. And I'm gonna center that, and I'm gonna take this and make sure that there's eight pixels of spacing between these two elements. And then we'll make sure that there's 16 pixels from the side, and then let's change this to be our active elements. We'll make this primary. We'll also make this text that primary color. And then I'm going to take this information and actually put it within another frame. And I'm going to set the height of this to 40 pixels and the width of it will be 248 pixels. And I'm going to change the fill to this light primary. Let's add eight pixels of rounding here. Let's actually change the width of this to 240. We're going to have this be 16 pixels from that headline. So let's apply auto layout to the title and subtitle. Let's frame this title and subtitle, and then we'll set the width of this. So the height of this will be 72 pixels. This will be 48. We're gonna keep this 16 pixels from the top just for some extra padding. So let's change that to have a little bit more spacing on the top than on the bottom. And then I am going to take this row component and I'm going to duplicate it, but I'm gonna make it inactive. Let's say this is gonna be sent, I'll change that. I'm gonna change this to be a paper plane icon. And then let's take both of these and then let's change this to be that gray. And then we're actually going to remove this fill completely. And let's make this a little bit lighter gray. And then we'll take both of these. I'll apply auto layout and I'll call this list. And then let's duplicate this again. We'll call this starred and then we'll change that to a star. We'll have a draft section. We'll also add a trash and a spam section here. So now we have our primary section, but I'm gonna add a secondary section here, but we wanna make sure that they're separate from each other. So I'm gonna take this whole list and I'm gonna duplicate it, and then I'm gonna remove this active one, and then I'm gonna take this first frame, and I'm gonna remove the inner frame, and I'm also gonna remove this icon, and I'm gonna change this type to be the same size as the subtitle up here, and we will call this labels. And then we're gonna add a little bit of spacing on the bottom, not the top, and so now, if I have both of these things and I put them right next to each other, we've got a little bit of space between sections. So let's change this to be a label and then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate, duplicate all of these, duplicate this, and we'll say finances, work, and friends. 
to delete this. Now you can see I've pretty much got the entire navigation drawer made. The one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my assets panel and I'm going to go to my divider. I'm gonna add that in here. Let's go back to layers. Let's go to this frame. We'll add this and we'll set this to be fill container. We'll have one between this list and one between the list above. Then I'm gonna take this and add 24 pixels of space on the top and bottom, just so you got a little bit more breathing room between the elements. And that's it, you've now got a navigation drawer that works for desktop. Let's go ahead and make one that works for mobile as well. So I'm gonna go over to design, and I'm gonna create a new frame, we'll call this phone. Let's go to Android small, and I'm gonna take this, give it a little bit of spacing from the desktop option, and then I'm going to go ahead and select this frame, and then I'm going to apply this up here, and then we're going to take this, and we're gonna only leave 56 pixels of spacing between the right side and this element. You'll notice that none of the contents are fitting. So to make this even more clear, I'm gonna add another frame here, and then I'm gonna add a fill, and that fill will be black, and we're gonna set the opacity to 40%, and that is what we call a scrim. And that scrim will go over any content in the background. To make this even more clear, let's go to effects. We're gonna add a heavy shadow here, so you can see that the shadow adds a layer of elevation. But the last thing that we need to do is take the three of these components and set it to fill container. And then we need to go in here and take all of these, set them to fill container. And then finally, we have to take this inner row. And then we have to set this frame and actually resize it manually because we didn't do this initially. We need to make sure I set this to scale. And then if I take this whole element, then I can select this. And if I'm working with a wider screen, I can easily resize the elements within it. So this is what we will call our mobile navigation drawer. We'll call this desktop navigation drawer and then the last thing we need to do is take this and make a bottom navigation drawer so this is very similar to our mobile one but the thing that we're going to do let's set this to be the height of the frame but then if you look at the specifications that google lays out this is actually supposed to take up a half of the screen height so what we're going to do here is divide this by two and then we will set this to be the full width so that is 360 and then we will move this down here. We're gonna update the spacing here and the divider as well. And that way you can see that you're supposed to vertically scroll to see more of the information below. And that's it. You now know how to create desktop and mobile navigation drawers as well as a bottom navigation drawer. This is something that I wish I'd learned sooner since I've designed a lot of software applications. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of navigation drawers, how they work, and feel confident that you'll be able to design one for yourself next time you're working on a software project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.